So then just work on getting as good of a average as you can. All right. Uh, this is a 10.4 factoring with special patterns. This is really a key lesson, and I hope you'll focus in. We will use these special patterns, especially uh, the first one, a ton of times, a zillion times. And it's a pretty easy pattern, but it's definitely something you need to learn. All right, it's called a difference of two squares. I don't know why I left such a big blank there, but a difference of two squares. Okay, why do we call it that? You don't need to do this. I'm just going to show you on this. Difference is subtraction, and notice there's a minus sign between the two. That's the difference part. And then x squared is a square, and y squared is a square. So you have the difference of two squares. That's where the name comes from. All right, and so we need to learn the pattern in factoring a difference of two squares. We'll start the way we start all factoring problems, and that's factor out common factors first. Why do students forget to factor out common factors first? Because not everything has common factors, and they begin to get lazy and forget to even think it. Don't be that person. Always think every factoring problem. Let me factor out common factors first. Otherwise, you're going to get number 20 wrong in the homework we just did, and number 26 in the homework we just did because you're not looking to factor out common factors first. All right, this one doesn't have any, uh, and so we're done. Next thing then, two parentheses again. So I'm going to make two parentheses. Don't make them real little because we got to put stuff inside. So every difference of two squares after you factor out the common factors, or if there are none, you start with two parentheses. Next thing you always do, and... Uh, I'm going to do this in blue. That's supposed to be blue. Plus in the middle of one of the parentheses and minus in the middle of the other. That's automatic. You do that every single time for a difference of two squares. Plus in the middle of one, minus in the middle of the other. Next step. The square root of the first term goes first. Now, we're going to write it this way for this time, and I'll show you a shortcut later. So I'm going to use my black for my square root symbol in the front of both terms. And then I'm going to take my red for the x squared. So we have the square root of x squared in the front of both. The square root of the first term goes in the front of each thing. And then we need to, again, take our black and do a square root symbol. And I'll show you how we're going to write this in the future. But I want this first one to be this way so you get the point. Square root of the last term. So take your green. The last term is a y squared, right? All right. So let's finish this thing up with our color. You need your two parentheses again. We're not going to show that step that way in the future. I just want it to be there for the first time we do it. Okay, so again, take your blue and put a blue plus in the middle of the front and a blue minus in the middle of the back. So class, what's the square root of x squared? x. Square root of x squared is x. So an x goes in the front of both. And what's the square root of y squared? y. Remember, square roots undo squares. Squares undo square roots. Square root of x squared is x. The square root of y squared is y. We end up with the quantity x plus y times the quantity x minus y. That is the factoring of a difference of two squares, and you do it that way every single time. This one gets used a multitude of times. It just comes up all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Now, generally, you don't need to write this. You can if you want. We think this step, and we normally just write this step. That step, we think. The next step is what we write. Okay. And again, this... 
is what you think. I'm teaching you what to think. Now, if you don't memorize what to think, then fine. I hope you'll remember what to think. If you'll just memorize what to think, then you're just executing the thoughts. Because that's how you do a difference two squares. That's it. And so they don't have to be hard. We just got to make sure we can execute it then from there. All right, so let's do the next one. So completely factor these difference of two squares. Get the name down. I will ask you the name. And the reason I want you to know the name is for this. I'll mention, oh, hey, that's a difference of two squares. And I want you to know what I'm talking about when I say, oh, that's a difference of two squares. Okay. So our first example is a difference of two squares. We're going to look to factor out common factors first. Anybody see any common factors? First one. No. So we're already into the second step. Two parentheses. Next step is automatic. I'm taking my blue plus in the middle of one, minus in the middle of the other. Next step, I'll take my red. And I have to think, what is the square root of the first term? And the square root of the first term is A. So I put it in the front of each. And I finish up with the square root of the back. Now, understand this before I go any further. This minus sign is taken care of by using the plus minus. The plus minus automatically takes care of that minus sign. Therefore, we're just worried about the 9. So we're doing the square root of 9, and we all know the square root of 9 is 3. And so in green, I put the square root of the back term in the back, and that's the factoring of that difference of two squares. If you were to multiply this back out, you can if you have time. It, it's tough because factoring takes time. And I will tell you this, Thursday's test, time's going to be an issue for some of you. Some of you, if you're not really sure what you're doing, time's going to end up being an issue. If you did have the time, you could multiply it back out and see if you get the original, and you would. If you distribute back out, A times A is A squared. Outers, A times a negative 3 is a negative 3A. Inners, positive 3 times A is a positive 3A. Those add out to 0. And then the back, positive 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9. And indeed, we do get back to the original. Right? So difference of two squares. Not very hard. Not very hard. So here's another variation. Can I show you every variation? No, but I can show you a few. So now we got an n squared minus 49p squared. It is a difference two squares. It's got a negative in the middle. The front's a square and the back's a square. Okay. So I'm going to factor out common factors first, and there are none. Therefore, then I'm going to do my two parentheses. Somebody tell me what to do next. Somebody raise your hand. What do I do next? Ashton? Take the square root of it. Not yet. Not yet. What's next? Josh? So uh, it would be nice if you just said plus in the middle of the first and minus in the middle of the second or last. But yes, plus minus, right? Plus in the middle of the first, minus in the middle of the second. Somebody tell me what's next. What's next? Ethan? All right, and so what is the square root of n squared? It is n. So we did the square root of n squared and put it in the front of each. What's next? Andrew, just tell me what to do. Don't tell me what it is. What? Okay, so we got to do the square root of 49p squared. So what would that be? Hopefully you think it's 7p, right? It is 7p. You're doing the square root of 49p squared. Which, by the way, would be the same thing as the square root of 7 squared p squared. Another way of looking at it. Or, 
would be the same thing as the square root of 7p quantity squared. All of that's all the same thing. No matter how you shake it, that's the square root of 49p squared. In the second example, I changed the 49 to a 7 squared. In the third example, I just applied the squared to the quantity, the 7 and the p, because the 7 squared and the p squared. They're all the same thing. In every case, it's a 7p. Three different ways of looking at the exact same thing. And look, sometimes the original will be given to you like this. Sometimes the original could be given to you like that. Rarely is it given to you like that, but it could be. Okay? But they're all the same thing, and they're all 7p. All right, let's go to the next one. So again, we're looking to factor out common factors first, and there are none. All right, at this point, I'm going to let you see if you can finish it out. All right, I'm going to pause the video. Go ahead and see if you can factor that. All right, so hopefully you said there are no common factors. Two parentheses, plus in the middle of the front, minus in the middle of the back. Frozen. Funny, I don't feel frozen. All right, so plus in the middle of the front, minus in the middle of the back. Square root of the front goes in the front. That's a 2a. And the square root of a 1 is a 1, and that goes in the back. So 2a plus 1 times quantity 2a minus 1. How many had that correct? Okay. And if you missed it, I don't know how you missed it, lest you didn't know that the square root of 1 is 1. Right? Square root of the front in the front. Square root of the back in the back. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of a squared is a. All right, not too tough. All right, try the next one. Oh, no, I didn't even give you what to think. Try the next one. I'm going to pause. All right, I really, 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 really hope you factored out the common three. Okay, and you now have x to the fourth minus four. And I hope now you didn't forget your three when you did your two parentheses. I hope you put a plus in the middle of the front and a minus in the middle of the back. What's the square root of x to the fourth? It is x squared. Square root of the front goes in the front. And the square root of the back goes in the back. How many got that one correct? Okay. Questions on that? Any questions on that? Anybody? Questions? Questions? Don't forget the common factors. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess. Factor out the common factors first. All right, the next one is a little unique. Let's see if we can factor that. All right, try that one. And I'm going to pause. All right, so hopefully the first thing you did was factor out the common 3y squared. Then you set up a difference of two squares. By the way, don't forget the 3y squared. It's still there in front. Plus in the middle of the front, minus in the middle of the back. Square root of the first, first, that's an x. Square root of the back, in the back, that's a 5y. So you should have gotten 3y squared times the quantity x plus 5y times the quantity x minus 5y. And there's no y's in the back, thank you. Yeah, that y's not there. We factored that out, right? That should have been a 25. So 3y squared times the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 5. Thank you, Ethan. No Kool-Aid for you. It can happen so easily, right? Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. And there were others of you I saw. But he was the first one I noticed. All right. How many got that correct? Okay. You're getting the pattern down. Questions. Questions. It's just a pattern. We're just... Following a pattern, getting out the common factors. Then what's left? The difference two squares, two parentheses, plus in the middle of the front, minus in the middle of the back. 
Square root of the front goes in the front of B of both. Square root of the back goes in the back of both. All right. So usually uh, about, what do we got in here, 27 of you today? So normally about five or six of you will get this one correct. Go ahead and factor that. See what you can do. Again, only five or six of you are going to get it. But see if you can beat the probability. They were saying last night in the Texas A&M game that the probability was zero that Texas A&M would come back and win. I think there were 48 seconds left, and they were losing by 12 points. And some poor mathematician said the probability was zero when they should have never said that. It had never happened before. So they called it probability of zero, but it wasn't zero. It's was probably more like 0. 0.0000. Somewhere there would have been a one, because guess what? Texas A&M won the game. So the probability, I'm thinking about four, five, six of you got this correct, but you can beat the probability. You can be better than that. How many think they got it? Oh, that's like three of you. Come on. You all know what to do. I taught you all what to do. You all factor out common factors. There are none. So you all did two parentheses, right? Hopefully you all put a plus in the middle of the one and a minus in the middle of the other, right? You all put the square root of the front in the front, 4n, 4n, right? Oh, you're, all, you're just about there. So what do I put in the back? Seven? No. What do I put in the back? Seven. Square root of seven. Right? How many got that right? Let me see your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just beat it. Seven of you got it. Awesome. Right? Plus in the middle of the front. Minus in the middle of the back. Square root of the front in the front. Square root of the back in the back. Come on. Square root of the back in the back. Right? Makes sense now? Okay, that's an unusual situation but it can be factored as a difference of two squares. Even though technically that seven isn't a perfect square, we can kind of force it that way. And there are times in math when we want to be able to do something like that as a means to an end. But look, that's that's our thoughts, right? Isn't that our thoughts? That's what I thought our thoughts were. Yeah, factor out common factors, none. Two parentheses, plus in the middle of one, minus in the middle of back, square to the front and the front, square to the back and the back, that's it. That's the pattern. Follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. All right, let's do the last one here. This one I'm not a big fan of. It's perfect square trinomials. Honestly, in this one, you got to recognize them first off. And to recognize them are, is tricky. So you got to understand where the middle term comes from, and you got to understand that the number, the coefficients, right, the multiplier of that middle term has to be 2 times the square root of the back number. So you got to know that. And if the front number is different, that kind of factors in as well. So it, it, the pattern's not so clear. So honestly, for these, I'm not a big one on the pattern. We all already know to factor a trinomial, we'll use two parentheses, right? And we know the front has to be multipliers that multiply to x squared, so we're going to use x and x. And again, we're going to look at our outers. We got 4 and 1 or 2 and 2, right? And I already see if I put a plus 2 there, then my inners gives me the other 2, and that gives me the 4 in the middle. And notice this thing ends up being x plus 2 quantity squared. So if it is a true perfect square trinomial, it's the front term square, the square root of the front, a positive sign, the square root of the back, 
and the whole quantity squared. That's the pattern. So again, watch. This is the square root of the front. Don't draw this, it'll just be confusing. The sine is always a plus. And the back is the square root of the back one. And then the whole quantity is squared. I mean, that's the pattern, but that, that one's hard to understand. Is it even a perfect square trinomial to begin with? And therefore, honestly, you can just factor it yourself as trial and error. But if you do get the pattern down and your brain works that way, it will save you a little bit of time. All right, so when you look at B, what's the first thing we're going to do on B? Just say it. Factor. factor out the common factors, and we have a common 7, right? So let's take out that common 7. Now we're left with n squared minus 6np plus 9p squared. What's the square root of 9? 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So again, if you knew the pattern, you'd do the square root of the front, which is, say it if you know it, n, sine of the middle. So the sine is a, what's the sine in the middle? Minus, and square root of the back, what's the square root of the back? 3 p and it's the whole quantity squared so that is the factoring of that if you know the pattern if you know it's a perfect square trinomial if not factor a trial and error you'll end up in the exact same place you'll end up in the exact same place stop packing up just a quick review so make sure you get the name down difference of two squares and look again this is what you have to think Perfect square trinomial, I'm not so interested in you getting the pattern down because, one, you got to recognize them. But if you can get it and your mind is sharp that way, it will save you some time. All right, tonight's homework's important. Take your time with it. Make sure you're understanding.